Discipline and focus are extremely important to be adopted in order to further cultivate our sense of familiarity, adaptability and eventually proficiency with regards to a certain set of knowledge and skills within an endeavour or a craft. They are abilities necessary for our dedication to eventually become competent and seasoned. But for a lot of us, discipline and focus are either absent, forced or they are divided among many different circumstances that eventually obstruct and impede our progression towards absolute mastery within our main commitment. This is what separates the good and the great from the best or those who are on their way to becoming the best. The best lives and breathes their craft. Their levels of discipline and focus are already within the vicinity of obsession. So immersive and captivated are their minds that the other endeavors that are done within their daily routines are all purposely planned, adopted and revolved around complementing or supplementing their main commitment. So uncompromising are their attitudes that they are utterly prepared and willing to make great sacrifices that most people like us gentlemen would deem to be greatly impossible or unnecessary, like social lives and relationships. All in the pursuit of supreme mastery. The slightly mistaken thing about focus that most of us believe is that it is all about the number of hours that you spend on a craft that will eventually get you to become skilled or proficient at something. Well, in actuality, to be more specific, it is the number of hours of intense immersion that actually counts towards your level of proficiency. The number of hours that you spend being thoroughly encapsulated within your work where you will develop a deep and unprecedented level of rhythm and connection with them to the point where you will eventually lose all sense of time and space because your mental bandwidth is entirely occupied to the brink by the vast scope of your work. One could spend 12 hours daily on a craft but if his mentality is timid, shallow and easily preoccupied with other thoughts but the work itself, the hours that he put in would not realistically count towards his level of proficiency towards that craft. Practice makes perfect only if they are deliberate. That is why if any of you gentlemen are asking how to have an unprecedented level of focus while doing a task, the simple answer is make sure the tasks that you are doing are down out of your own profound level of sheer curiosity, enthusiasm, confidence and will. Because as much as many people told you to get rid of distractions or engineer your workspace in some way so that you have nothing else to focus on but your work, your state of emotions will still play a strong role in your level of commitment. If we are excited, passionate and undyingly curious about something, our mind activates and innately redirects our entire attention towards it. But if we are uninterested, bored and uninspired, our mind shuts down and eventually becomes passive. And as much as you want to stay away from distractions, you will eventually seek distractions out of your own innate impulse to occupy your mental bandwidth. Of course, there are always exceptions, as there are multiple paths to the top of the mountain. Some people can force themselves to focus within an endeavor that they have absolutely no interest or passion in. But usually, it is achieved out of a pure sense of extreme cruciality, urgency and necessity regarding survival and welfare. Achieving supreme mastery within an art or a craft or an endeavor is the moment where every action or response that you take surrounding the scope of that profession are all done in a swift, seamless and instinctual manner. You don't have to bring yourself to think hard, it is all done through an innate habituated disposition achieved through thousands of hours of intense deliberate practice. And this form of practice is not like your normal run-of-the-mill type where your goal is only to understand the fundamentals and then go easy on your efforts. Absolutely not. This form of practice is demanding in every sense. You will discover your limitations and counter plateaus and experience tons of failures, setbacks, errors and frustrations. This form of practice requires you to never be satisfied or content with your progression, no matter how far. Because the practice towards mastery is all about reaching and doing things that most people won't have the thought of doing or would never even dare to attempt in doing. The best people in their field have always created and enter a realm of their own. They have discovered, developed and extended the scope of knowledge, circumstances and understanding within their field. A nice example is Muhammad Ali's rope-a-dope tactic which involves leaning against the elastic ropes of the boxing ring to dissipate the energy of your opponent's punches while making them vulnerable to counters and over-expenditure of energy. Ali experimented with this technique during his sparring sessions where he was trying to figure out how to better take punches in the abdomen. This type of practice and mindset is why the best people in their field are considered as exceptional or in the class of their own because they are always willing to go above and beyond their responsibilities. That is why, like I said, before, if you have a timid, shallow and limited mindset, you will never achieve exceptionality within your field. To become the best or one of the best in what you do, you must treat your craft not as a job but as a way of life. 
Of course, it doesn't mean that you have to spend every living moment in intense focus. No, we are all still humans. We need to rest and recover to come back more prepared and more adapted towards our work. When we spend too much time on the edge within focus, our mind becomes tight and eventually becomes inefficient and ineffective to process information. This is the reason why you often feel stuck during your work and could not progress effectively. Everything will start to go into a path of diminishing returns. That is why we need regular periods to unwind and recover so that our mind can expand once again and return to their primitive state, just like muscles. But the difference between what the best does during their break or rest periods and what normal people do is like I've said before, they revolve their other endeavors as supplements or complements to their main commitment. They do not engage in endeavors that will in any shape or form compromise their performance and progress. For example, Miyamoto Musashi does not engage in sexual activities and alcoholic beverages in his quest to become the greatest swordsman. Instead, he meditates, immerses himself in nature and visualizes his next opponent so that he never completely loses focus from the way of the sword. Often for us, we tend to engage in activities and endeavors that completely takes our mind away or off of our main commitment. And we usually and unconsciously overextend the time that we spend doing those endeavors, ultimately sabotaging our performance and progress. This is like a mixed martial artists who indulge extensively in the drunkenness of their instant gratifications that they lose focus to improve their performance where they left off. The best always maintains their focus even when they rest. Being the best is a life not for everyone. The pressure, the expectations and the sacrifices are incredibly immense and you will always experience pessimism, doubt and condemnation from people around you. Calling you terms such as you are crazy, you're a lunatic, you're just too much and everything you are doing is completely unnecessary. Only few people or even none will believe and invest in your work, such as the master that you are learning from. People hate what they don't understand. That is why they are trying to prevent you from disturbing the scope, tranquility and stillness of their judgments. This is where you will often experience times of distress, loneliness, uncertainty and hesitancy in what you are doing. Because as social creatures, it is instinctual for us to compare and contrast with the opinions and judgments from other people to further strengthen the confidence of our own opinions and judgments. The temptations to stop and return to normality will haunt you time and time again. This is where you must become extremely self-reliant and self-sufficient and adopt a strong belief system to keep you in check to never stray too far from your commitment. As much as I wanted to become a master myself, I have to admit, I still do slip away from my work often and eventually lose focus on the progression that I've made. And as admirable as the journey to become the best in what you do, most of us gentlemen who are watching this realistically won't even reach that far because it is a life full of flaws that may take away some of the humanity within you. And because the scale, ease of access and magnitude of temptations or short-term gratifications of the modern world will most certainly drag you off of your focus. But of course, that doesn't mean that we cannot adopt certain elements within the way of mastery to help us become at least great or prominent in what we do for a living. The never-ending pursuit of excellence. Thank you for watching.